Hello, I'm a Chris Sathanis. I'm a KMP developer, and uh, tech support's coming up Tuesday for that guy. And today I'll be reacting to a video uh, by my new favorite uh, Microsoft software developer channel, uh, The Pain of Post Agile. This is called Fixing Software with Ben. This guy's name's Ben. Let me um, get my window back up here a little bit so we can see there. All right, let's get into it. Stop saying Agile's dead. It's not dead. It just really sucks. And while not dead, it has definitely been the victim of identity theft, meaning the sad, painful, and like super frustrating state of ag Agile practices currently barely resembles what it was originally drafted to be. For me, starting in Agile around 2009, moving from engineering into a Scrum Master role, into an Agile coach role, becoming a licensed Scrum trainer, back into engineering, I've kind of seen this from all angles. So, Well, you may not see it from the first angle because the, before there was Agile, there were actually people already doing that stuff in that way. They just didn't have a code for it and they didn't have a training course or a certification or a or a, a, a scrum master or any of these role names that you're talking about that was none of that was there now the spirit was there but not at these bigger companies right because they had they had already come because I was, I was working at these companies since, since the 80s uh you know, at different levels from tech support all up to engineering and running my own thing so i've seen what was happening at the time and this agile thing really wasn't even talked about it back then at all nobody was even talking about it uh, there was Waterfall, and then there was just scrappy little companies, which is what I was working at. Uh, they were just trying to get things done before funding ran out. Um, and were forced into what we call Agile, and what people think, what we people, when they imagine what Agile should, kind of how it should work like uh, at the engineering level, not the management level. The management could never do it. Like, modern managers would never be able to deal with the level of chaos that what you had to bring in the and the level of talent you had to bring to bear on these problems with lots of differing opinions, but you know, all of them are pretty good as opposed to <laughs> lots of differing opinions and all of them are pretty bad, which is kind of what Agile should do. Let's keep, let's keep going. So I know that there's no real quick fix and that's not what this video is. I'm not going to talk about some new framework, but I do think it's important to unpack. I am. I'm going to talk about a new framework. Oh yeah, I've got a new framework in, my, in mind. I'm calling it Adventure Driven Development. And I've already got a little draft going for it. I'm going to put it on this channel probably right after this. Uh, and maybe we'll get started in a conversation about how the kind of the, the spirit of Agile without having those crazy, this is better than that, and we're in this, then that, and that, and we're a certification, and a registration, and a licensing, and trademarking, and marketing, sales, and just discovery process. No, we're not doing that, none of that, none of that. Let's keep going. Pack this whole Agile is dead thing. So we can orient. Well, I don't think I think I got killed in the in the, in the was strangled in the in the in its little crib is what happened because once these management people got a hold of it and and tried to codify it and scrumify it and leanify it and Toyotify it and all those things that we coming from this manufacturing place which they're all trained for right so the kinds of work we're doing in in software development is pure almost near pure knowledge works like as long as we get 16 people with the same degree as einstein we're going to come up with a new emc squared right maybe maybe not probably not but like to expect it like we're gonna make us a process as long as we get 16 engineers with the same exact training of, as einstein and he combed through the patents and all that stuff, we'll get we'll get the new theory of relativity coming out it's like no no, it's the you, these things are spontaneous. They they're they're like a chaos cloud. Uh, you kind of like shove it into a, people into a room. You kind of collect these people and you get them in the right spirit of mind. Then you, you might get something amazing coming out of it. And that's kind of how it works anyway. And to the current state, why is it so terrible right now? It's because that trademark, copyright, license, uh, scrum master certification, <laughs> all that stuff. That's the that's the reason. What happened? And then we can start to have. I just put it in a nutshell. A discussion on maybe what's next for our industry. What's the next evolution? So there's adventure driven development, the stuff I'm working on, which makes development fun again and puts the risk way, right out in front. We're not trying to hide the risk. There's no guarantees that we're going to get through this and the budget and the time allotted. We, we, we all going to put that right out in front. We don't know. So it's an adventure. It's an adventure. If you're not, if you're trying to guarantee when things are delivered and that there'll be the thing you want at the end and it'll do what you want where the, the waterfall is never going to do it as much as you want it to be i know i know we want it to be wouldn't it be nice that we, if we could write a book from beginning to end with a formula and it would be a bestseller every time wouldn't that be nice 
There's a couple of different types of takes on this Agile is dead thing. One here from Goiko is basically saying Agile isn't dead necessarily. It's just that it's done its job. And now it's just business as usual. He's saying, if you look back 30 years ago, the average software release cycle took several several months, if not years. And now it happened. Well, yeah, I mean, that's how it still does. What are you talking about? I mean, that's not changed. It's in a few weeks. It's no longer innovative, exciting, worthy of keynote talks or passionate meetups. The revolution. Well, once they put all the straight scrum trademarker training regimentation, yeah, it killed all the joy out of it. Yeah, it might, it might as well be. Kind of like it's great. Like I said, scrangling is great, man. You wouldn't even get that chance to get out because... What it was trying to capture was that spirit of controlled chaos that happened to like spurn out amazing stuff every now and then. But the, the way they, what they turned it into is they tried to make it into a management process, right? And, and to sell it to management, right? Because they're the ones that buy this kind of stuff. So they had to tailor it, right? They tailored the message. Could you make it look like this? Could we have some guarantees at the end? Can we have a, just a, could you, could you estimate everything ahead of time? Maybe we put some, We'll call it planning poker. Make it still make it kind of fun. And it's like, no, <laughs> playing poker is not fun. Holy yeah, moly. Succeeded and passed, which is the crux of his argument here. People just got on with their jobs. No, I mean, example, automation testing is just a regular thing now. I mean, <laughs> that's, that was, I mean, it should have been, we didn't have the things to do it back then. Automated testing is a, is a technology. It has nothing to do with really how you actually build things. It's just the thing. It's like, now we have a compiler and so we don't have to use assembly in hand. And it's like, that's the kind of, it's like, yeah, okay, we get the technology, but there, I'm talking about a whole different thing, right? How knowledge work is done, how it's produced, what makes people want to really give, give a shit and make people care versus has a ticket, a ticket. I don't want no ticket. Here's what you get for speeding a ticket. No, I don't want a ticket. I want to fucking work on some epic quest that at the end there's a pot of gold maybe or a old star or something else oh, oh no, my god you went through a heroic quest not a heroic effort a heroic quest and some sort of ignition like knowledge like, oh, man, holy shit that was hard and it was worth it even though the well maybe only we care about it but like put it in those terms like adventure driven development that's what i'm talking about continuous integration just works because someone already set it up um, people are no longer getting stuck reading hundreds of pages of requirements that everyone knows are total bs so wrong wrong that never changes where did that change that's waterfall requirements what is that what that's so waterfally no wonder a gotch go ad zik is like Bleh. essentially the argument is agile is done it had it served its purpose you're doing exactly as expected you're not reinventing the wheel but just riding on it it's a really interesting so uh, i also just went through a uh, debate course with andrew wilson and one of the things i discovered through that course after i saw a meme that says most things in uh, what we're debating is definitions of what these things mean so the definitions of these terms have totally changed over time and what we're actually trying to do and delivering value as software developers or whatever using these computers and machines to like solve human problems that got lost somewhere in all this jargon. Uh, keep going. Kind of take, and that's that's shared with a lot of people. I think there's truth to this, but it's not the whole picture. Another really interesting and more nuanced take from Kyle here, who I highly recommend you go follow him on LinkedIn and anywhere else. Really interesting kind of philosopher, developer content. He talks about linguistic drift and word pollution. And how oh, I just said, I, I haven't previewed this video, so I'm watching this for the first time. Yeah, what we call things back then, what we were trying to, do, what were the focus was back then, and why people even brought this up got totally changed into the thing that it was trying to go against. And the thing that was, we were fangled, we were taking the breath out of it, just all the life out of it. It was like, they put it up, making it into a puppet and dancing around. Look, look at me, I'm agile, look at me. It's like, uh, no, that's, no, that's not agile, man. Essentially, over time, our culture, our community will take words and shift its meaning over time. And he talks about the word literally, who you know, obviously literally doesn't mean literally yeah. anymore. What it used to mean was exactly according to, word, to my words, no exaggeration, with the emotional resonance of take this very seriously. And he gives the example here, your face is literally going to fall off, which obviously doesn't mean literally fall off. It means figuratively. And the emotional resonance has a bit of emphasis. What he says here is... Right. That was it. So the, that, the way that people used it, it was they were trying to do this acute little high emphasis thing to make it funny. But now it's now people are confused. Like, no, it means the same thing. It's like, God damn it. It takes useful words and makes them useless. Really, like, yeah, for sure, really man. But what he argues is that the same thing has happened with Agile and you could say with Scrum and other types of terms where over time, the word has come to mean something completely different than what it originally meant. Oh, and yeah. I mean, almost from the, from the jump. Because it was just so far beyond out of a managers who are getting sold these courses, right? And these ideas and 
these things that came through the developers and they saw the developers were like making amazing things with the managers were like we want some of that there can we just make it into a process we can just duplicate over here and have the same exact success that you went through a thousand different iterations of a thousand different things you finally came up with that one thing can we just have a way to just do the one thing can we do that no you have to do the thousand and one things. Sorry. This is how it works. Now there's a way to minimize some of that stuff and like do something like, no, okay, we're doing the, the, the exploring part where we're going all over the place trying to find stuff, right? There's a, there's a time to do that. And there's a time was like, okay, we got one. Now how do we get through the, all the mountainous terrain to get over to the top to get to the dragon, through the dragon's den, slay that motherfucker, and then get take the gold? How do we do that? Well, that's a new mountain. We haven't seen that one before. How are we going to climb it? I don't know. Let's get our gear out and try and get up this thing. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? We've never seen this mountain. We just discovered this new land. How, do we, how long is it going to take to get up that mountain? And how long is it going to take to kill that dragon? As long as it takes. But guess what? We know where the dragon is. We know where the gold is. We know there's a mountain here. We've identified because we've tried to do the paths. It's like, no, this is the way we got to go. This is, the, this is the, the least hardest way to get to the gold, which is in the mountain, in the, in, the, in, in the dragon's den. Okay? That's the whole, that's the idea. It's like, how long is it? I don't know. How long do you got? How long do you want to go? How long do you want to go? Because we might get there early. Probably not. Probably going to get there late. Probably going to be a lot of problems in the way we haven't thought about. But if you want to get that gold, man, there's only you're gonna get, the only other people that are gonna get that goal. Are other people are doing the same exact thing. Now, once we get there, yeah, there's gonna be a path up the hell trying to get the gold out because we can't get all the gold that's up there all the, all at the same time. It's a process, and people are gonna find out about it. And so, so let's you know, let's just deal with that. You see, is this sort of backlash against that? Well, that's not agile. Have you ever, have you even read the manifesto? Have you even read the Scrum Guide? You know, it's not DevOps. Have you even read the Phoenix? Scrum is not manifest. Scrum is not agile. Okay, that's the first thing that got confused. All mixed up. Well, oh, you mean Scrum? You mean we do? So agile has nothing to do with Scrum. Doesn't mention Scrum. Doesn't have anything to do with that stuff. It's just oh, we can just pack that on because we already know it from this other thing. Toyota had amazing success. We're just gonna tack on a, a manufacturing quality process onto this thing. We just need some sort of structure. It's like well, we got Scrum. We've been doing Scrum. We get to some kind of some sort of structure. It's like no, you're, the team is supposed to develop all that stuff, and it's not supposed to come top down, right? The adventurers who are actually going up the mountain and, and having to deal with this goddamn dragon, yeah, they're the ones who are gonna like kind of figure out like, okay, we don't need a, we need sleds because there's some icy parts. We're gonna need ice picks. Well, we're not gonna use, maybe a hot balloon would work for scouting out, uh, but we don't need a dragster. We don't need. Uh, a watermill. Uh, we need other. <laughs> we need other, this, this other stuff. And who's going to be going up the mountain? Well, the people, the people who've been up the mountain or mountaineers, might well have some clues about how you might get up to that mountain. And people who've dealt with dragons before, and we will talk to them, right? Next project or read a DevOps report. So we get into this like dictionary war about the definition of words, essentially. It's Absolutely. Really just not and like I said, you've seen this with Scrum too. I, I mean, right that's there. just okay. So all the other thing that's happening here is we're dealing with salespeople. We're dealing with salespeople who need to make a goddamn sale because they got their kids need braces and private school is not cheap and they got a BMW payment to make, okay? So they're going to sell that thing. Guess how they're going to sell? They're going to squeeze it in and match up their buddies who are having these problems to try to see if we can work together and make some money. The dictionary. Come on, this is, so a lot of this, this, this agile scrum certification, licensing, um, uh, uh, retreat, uh, training, uh, course wear, all that stuff is because the engineering process of knowledge work is so new and so different than everything we're taught in all of our schooling and that this is actually a trade secret on how to develop this stuff because it takes a certain mindset of like creativity as well as like focusing in on some goal together with other people who are having a good time, who are actually having fun. Oh, you're not, you're not supposed to have fun. Oh no, no. You, the way these, a lot of these technologies that we're using, how we're developed, Unix, small talk, all the windowing stuff. That was people having fun, man. That was not prescribed by management. 
All right? They were using mainframes, and they were happy with doing batch processing, okay? The windowing stuff, those were made by some hippie, crazy dudes. They were just like, shh, don't tell them what we're doing or how we're doing it, because then they'll ruin it and probably not even understand what we're doing anyway, and somebody else is going to take it. And we're not going to be the ones that get credit for it. And that's just how it goes. So shh, let's just keep going while we can. Shh. And they did, it as long, they did it as long as they could at Xerox. Okay, they did it as long as And then, was, then they handed it over to Apple. And they did it as long as they could. And then it went to Next for a little while. And they did it as long as they could. Where's it at now? I'm not really sure where it is right now. Maybe small companies like the, like the ones I'm talking about. Or they're, I'm talking that are like all these people are getting together. All these all these. Uh, engineers getting s- s- blown out of these companies going, you know what? I think maybe it's time I go build something. And they're building it right now. <laughs> and they're both like this. Like, there's got to have fun. You got to have fun with this stuff, man. If you don't make it fun, it's not going to get done. That's the little saying I just came up with. Or fighting against kind of the hostile takeover of the Scrum definition. I actually was a licensed Scrum trainer. I was interviewed by oh, Ken no. Schwaber, who was a co-creator of Scrum. I don't care. And spent multiple sessions with him over doesn't years matter. with the other trainers. I'm sure he doesn't know. How, how, how did that work out? Who I am. But he talked about this idea of Scrum being, quote, immutable. And the idea there was to try to preserve the definition of Scrum. because he- Well, that's completely against the Agile Manifesto. By the way, just want to say, point it out there. Those are conflicting things, right? So the Scrum stuff is loved by management because they got a little burned down charts and they got little tickets. They know exactly how long things are going to take as if it was a manufacturing process. It's not manufacturing. We are building the widget that the factory will make. We're not building the factory, okay? The factory is already built. It's called the CIC pipeline. Distribution is already taken care of. It's this other thing. It's like, how do we... Make something that people want and we'll pay money for. Pay for our salaries, for the praises, for the kids in the private schools. No. So we can do our sales. And so the salespeople kind of drifting and not quite exactly saying what we're selling agile training trademark. No, we're gonna, like, how do you do it? Like, hey, keep going. He actually foresaw this happening, that the industry trying to co-opt it and take Scrum and turn it into something that was never intended to be. Well, Agile would do, Agile was, so one of the things about Agile is that was it was taking on anything, anything. And then they, oh, the Agile's the Scrum. No, 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 that's not what that is. That was just the thing around that was like, well, let's just see if we use plug this in and change it all around. Like the Scrum guys are like, no, because they're still trying to do the manufacturing process. They're trying to do knowledge work as if it was manufacturing. And it's just completely hard to get through to these people. It's like, dude, I know you have, no, they didn't teach you this in school. It's like trade secret. It's not a manufacturing process. I, it's like so difficult because they see it's like, oh, you just put the button here and you put the thing here and you do the requirements and you, and then you put the buttons together and everything's good, right? Boop. And how many, ten, how many products do we have? How many apps, websites that people have zero users? They have more servers than users. How many? Most of them. Why? Because they thought it was a manufacturing process. It's not a manufacturing process. It's a freaking knowledge work. It's all this creativity and like listening and trying stuff and not trying to rush. Every t- like to get on my first here. It's like, I got it now. We're the market dominator. No, no, you're not. You're just first. You're not a market anything. Especially with stuff like how big these bloated these companies are. You guys are ripe for takeover. And people already know how to use they're already primed and ready that for the market you dominate. It's like it's just an idea, man. It's just an idea in someone's head, right? Those are those are so if you can copy the someone's idea and make make it closer to how someone envisions how they want their problem solved, you've just saved them a bunch of time and bullshit and had had to and you've actually got a customer for life at that point, right? If you can give something in the way they want, the way they want it, at a price that's good that makes sense for them, it's not gonna kill them. And it's still profitable for you. Those are bun- there's a bunch of businesses that are totally right for takeover right now. He created the Scrum. Guide. There's a literal 17 page literal. <laughs> yeah, anyway, there's a 17 page Scrum guide that spells out exactly what Scrum is. And st- yeah, for a manufacturing process, it makes sense. But for doing knowledge work, it's silly. Still, the industry has changed its meaning. It doesn't really mean Scrum anymore. And it should me, read the Scrum we should, guide. We should change it. We should get rid of it. It should be dumped. It, should, it was a, kind of a bad idea to start with. Go look. For, look at YouTube for Scrum and how developers feel about it or any real team members, really. And a lot of the really big tech YouTubers talk about how Agile has seen its heyday, how people hate Scrum. And the things they talk about hating aren't actually even in the Scrum Guide or they're not even. But it of- doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because that's what's been. This is what's happened. 
this word is drifted because I mean I like the ad part the agile like we are drifting we're just trying teams are trying to go up with their own stuff and being being smart about hey you need to dump some of this stuff that don't work for me that's agile that's truly agile like people don't even forget that because the agile TM uh, certification licensed coaches they'll never tell you that because that's not what the managers want to hear man they just want to hear it's a manufacturing process like because oh it's a manufacturing oh it's a manufacturing process. Oh, okay, wait, I could do charts and, woo, charts to you. Someone finally told me it's a manufacturing process. Now I know what you're talking about. These engineers on this computer software stuff, they are talking a kooky, weird shit. I have no, no idea what they're talking about. Requirements, what are you talking about? No. Oh, yeah, hey, it's manufacturing. The Agile Manifesto or the principles used to really frustrate me, and I would get into these type of holy war type of discussions where, no, you you're should. not doing Scrum type of a thing. And not you because, should, because they weren't. None of them were. And they shouldn't have been this. It's okay. They shouldn't have. I was trying to be dogmatic, I think. Maybe I was a little bit, but mostly because. Yeah, because they tried these trainers, these trainers that you influenced by, who told you, no, no, this is the way you got to do it. That's the way he does it. That's the way he does it. It's not the way you got to do it. That's the way he does it. And usually these trainers will actually say in the beginning, which goes right over people's heads, you know, it's just one way to do it. Some of the, if they get real lost, this is a way that I've heard. About, I don't know if it actually works or not. I don't know. You guys figure that out. But here's some ideas to work with, right? Instead of like, no, this is the way it is done. <sighs> Google, you're not Google if you don't do the scrum. From that definition, because for example, people just complain so much about story points and velocity and how they have to make a sprint commitment up front. And that's what they hate about scrum. It's just like mini waterfalls. That's actually not scrum, but it doesn't really matter anymore. because It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. That is, but that is the standard. Water, waterfall is the standard. They call it agile. They call it scrum. They call it all this bullshit. Lean, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's, at the end of the day, it's tickets, sprints, and estimates. You better get your poker out. You better get your point pokers out. And it better be a Fibonacci sequence, or we'll get on you. Four's not Fibonacci. Because that's what the industry believes Scrum is. That's how it's been implemented. So let's look at modern Agile. No, that's, that's how people have thought about how to, to, to design software, which is knowledge work. And they're trying to... Again, apply a goddamn manufacturing process onto something that's never going to be a manufacturing process. To the original Agile Manifesto. And so what I've done is I've kind of sliced out the pieces of the Agile Manifesto and overlaid what I think is what modern Agile looks like. In the original Manifesto, we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. I think that's really more change to we are being told better ways of developing software yeah. by non-technical managers and coaches. And yeah, been, of course. I am the manager right now, and I've been the coach, and I've been very guilty of this. It's going in as a talking head thinking I know what's best, trying to slap down the process is the one right way of doing things um, versus... Well, that's what, because that's what the managers want you to do, man. That's what they, they the engineers know it's bunk and bullshit and stupid and we're going to figure it out anyway. Whatever you guys, whatever you guys are saying, you're just crazy, you stand up and you're, you're, you're burned down charts. We're still going to take the amount of time it takes, dude. So you can put all kinds of processes, put all kinds of things, make put, put lipstick on the pig. It's still going to get dirty. At the end of the day, we're going to be washing a pig. And it's going to take as long as it takes to get that pig clean. It's really stepping back, giving the team the space to allow their processes to emerge. That doesn't really happen in Modern Agile. The other value, individuals and interactions over process. Now, why would it? No. If all the if all the managers know how to do it, they don't, they're non-technical, right? So they have no idea how this shit works. If all they got is, how to, uh, look, man, you're supposed to do, you committed to 16 points. And you only did 12. So, uh... We're going to write you up, and if it keeps happening, we're going to get rid of you. Oh, that's perfect for getting from knowledge work. Oh, yeah, that gets you the real good stuff. That gets you the real good stuff that your customers all love. <laughs> tools. When I was a Scrum Master, I struggled with this because what I was really trying to focus on was creating the systems of interaction, systems of communication, systems of work, so that people, the team itself, was optimized. But yeah, how about get out of the way, stupid? And uh, not you, but there's a lot. There's a lot of guys do this. A lot, they're told to do this. All right? now, I'm, I'm not trying to diss you too hard, but it is kind of dumb. Like, if you've been in this business long enough, you'll see that. Like the more you get out of the way, and you get people that are smart. Now, dumb people, meh, you're gonna have problems no matter what. Okay, and no matter what kind of pressures you put on it. If you got a bunch of dumb people that don't know what they're doing, yeah, you're gonna have problems anyway. But if you have smart people that know what they're doing, if you can just sense that you're not really adding anything, maybe you're like. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna talk to management like I'm telling you guys all this shit, but you could just go to ignore me and figure. You guys, I think you guys are figured out on your own. But I'm gonna I'm gonna run interference for you guys. I'm gonna tell them all the stuff that the trainer came in uh, to tell me that how these things processes work. But I'm gonna trust you guys to get it all put together. Now you gotta put on a good show. 
if they come in and want to sit in in the stand-ups or whatever, or want a status meeting, I gotta we gotta do the whole thing, the song and dance. But in general, eh, you guys, I think we'll, I think you guys can keep me in the loop. But anything I can do, I'm gonna run interference over here. Just you know, don't kind of goof off too much and try and get some stuff done. I trust you that you want to get this stuff done. I'm trying to make it easy for you. <laughs> that would be making that would make sense, but that never happens. But all my managers seem to care about was Jira. Was like, are we gonna meet our commitment? Are we on track for delivery? Well, what else do they got, buddy? They're non-technical. So what else do they have? Look, man. Here's the big problem with tech: is there's this huge layer of C students who are telling C and B students who are telling you A students to get. They're getting the sales right. They're doing the snorting the coke in the in the champagne room to get the sale to get this product. You know, for, for you to work on it, right? They don't know what you're doing. And there's a whole bunch of those layers over. There's eight bosses. Like, they have an idiocracy here. It's not idiocracy. It's, uh, what the fuck? Not, not the idea. Tra uh, office space. The other one. Mike Judge Click. They don't know. How, what else do they got except a chart on their computer and an emails? They don't got nothing. They don't know what you're talking about. They can't help. They don't even know what you're doing. They have no clue. All they got is a chart they can show their boss, 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 and the guy has a thousand charts, it's like, oh, look at all my projects. I know exactly which where one is at, and where one's going to be shipping, and when we're going to, which one's on schedule for budget, and who's working the hardest. Yes, I know all the things. As if it's a big manufacturing process. That shit's good, that's never going to fly. That was only available in this ZERP environment, zero interest rate policy environment, this low interest rate, 15 years of that stuff. That's the only reason this stuff's around. This is all going away. Uh, so the adventure-driven development is the future of all this stuff, and it's going to just slide that stuff out of the way. And managers are going to have to understand because it's not going to be too many layers. It's going to be a guy that kind of understands how this stuff works. Like, we're going to do it as much as, as much as we can if you don't want all that middle stuff. And we're going to be, you're going to get talented people together and to build these things to kind of know what they're doing. And it's going to be small number, small teams. And we're not going to be dealing with big layers of management. And we're going to be having an understanding. It might, it's going to, we don't know how long it's going to take, but we're going to make it good. And we're going to just do the things that make it good and do not and try to do the least amount of things that make it suck and not try and go super fast to the market. We want to go to market sooner with the products that people actually want. In the way they want them, at a good price, as profitable. Wait, where, what, what? It basically just becomes project management. Jira. And, you know, I'm not even going to really talk too much about scale to framework safe, um, but it's another example of where the focus really has shifted to frameworks, processes, and tools. That's kind of what modern agile looks like because it's easier to sell. The other value here, working software over comprehensive documentation. I think working software, working valuable software, the intent is that that is the main measure of value for a team. But I, but I think that it's kind of shifted away to working software. Okay, working software is one thing. I mean, when the ages of out waterfall, where you wouldn't have, okay, the whole that working software thing. Where that came from is like in the days of waterfall, these big corporations, they would be have big old hundred thousand person to five hundred person teams all working on the sub modules, right? And the water because it's a waterfall process. Everything's requirements, and then everyone's spec'd out, and the work isn't broken up, and all these different teams, and then everyone's building these separate things. And when the, at the end of the thing, at the very end, they're all supposed to come together, link everything up, and it was supposed to work like a charm, work like magic. Like it's some kind of manufacturing process. It's not a manufacturing process. So they, what happened was, okay, we got to do a thing where every two weeks we get together and create working software. That's what that is. So working software is now, now what that's equated to in people's minds, like, oh, you mean software that we can go right to the market with? It's like, sort of, yes, kind of, but it's, but it's, but it's. The only purpose is to get to the market, which is the, the user, the certain the people actually buying it, not your product manager, an actual end user, someone plunking down dollars that would didn't come from the company, that's so, that actually their own money, right? This is super important, right? I was like, whoa, what do you mean? Their own money? What do you mean? We can't pay them to use our product? That we can develop that? That's not working. No, okay, that's not working software, okay? The software is working, yes, but is it delivering the value? Is it delivering value for someone? That's the part that these people miss. It's like, cause they're super, cause it's a student, right? He's in the, he's deep in the code. Like, I might get it if I can get it, man. You're deep in the code. You don't know about what the customer actually wants. 
You're working in businesses and industries. You don't even barely know what these things are for. As a, so we got, it's really important that you actually know what people are, by the, how the value is coming through. It's important for engineers to know where the value is coming from. Because if we're not, we will go off into very strange areas, very weird places and I, tiny little details, building out huge features that no one actually clicks on. No one opens up. No one cares. We will go do that stuff. So that's working software, right? That's not what I'm talking about. We're just like delivering value. So we're not going to the dirt pile. Then we're not going to go mine lead because it's cheap and easy. We need the gold, man. We're not mining lead, okay? That may be another crew that somebody else, maybe they need, they need that. But our customers don't want lead. They want the gold, man. They want to make, so we got to bring the gold out for them, okay? Metric is why I did metrics here. Did a, did a team achieve their velocity of 30 points? Who cares? But I guess the managers and the leaders care about that because they see the Yes, team. because that's all they have. What else do they have? What else do they got other than the metrics, man? And the state, the dashboards, and the Jira that you hate. That's their job. That's all they got, man. Do you think they're going to go through all the bullshit you and I had learned to make this stuff work? Don't even halfway understand it? This stuff's crazy. The technologies that have been using, the software technologies, have been crazy crap, dude. Slapped together, halfway thought through. Made over, he made it in six days. He made JavaScript in 12 days. And we're still using that bullshit. All right? So the stuff's not super well thought through. It got us from A to B, right? That's proof of concepts. A lot of this, most of all these pro software products we're using are proof of concepts. That just happened to get a little bit more traction, right? So that's why there's still this massive opportunity for people to go after these markets of, because because the cost of doing these, building these products and running these companies just went way down. And that's why they're freaking out and they're firing everybody, but they're firing all the engineers. What are you doing that for? You know we're just going to compete against you, ding dong. This is this is all that happened before. It's happening again. Says essentially just delivery factories, feature factories. And in comprehensive documentation, we might not have BRDs, those big 100-page documents anymore, but teams are still expected to not engage in the work until all the <coughs> steps have been completed. For example, we need all the UX mocks kind of spelled out, or we need all the acceptance criteria in the user stories spelled out. So the documentation has just become more robust, really. That's not just a flat list of uh, requirements anymore, but really nothing has really changed here, in my, in my opinion. We still don't let teams necessarily engage in the upfront stuff in parallel. The next one, customer collaboration. Yeah, that's dumb. So that's all going away, too. So this is, that's what he's talking about is waterfall. You know, big design up front, all the pixel-perfect mocks and all that stuff. Yeah, that's going away too. Everything's going to be built up from the, the MVP, from the engineer, talking to some customer saying, he's, he knows, he says, oh, oh, you want that built? I can build that. We can build that for you to run that thing. Oh, yeah, we can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I, I, have, enough, I have enough skill because I've been paying attention to the latest tooling. All right, my thing's for Kotlin and KMP. It's fucking amazing. Like, holy shit. Holy shit. Like, I can do iOS. I can do web. I can do desktop. I can do Android. And back in one language and one set of libraries. What? One UI kit? What? And it's actually running on the metal, not some JavaScript layer. What? Come on now. Collaboration over contract negotiation. Really, this one kind of got thrown out by Modern Agile. Devs, team members don't work with customers. Maybe, you know, rarely. I'm sure I have, I have a few times, but generally speaking, we never talk to a customer. We never see a customer. We don't know who they are, what they want. We uh, how is that Agile Scrum certified coach? Never talk to a customer? Holy shit, man. No wonder you're pissed off, dude. That's no fun. Talking to customers is super fun, man. You get to see your work actually used by the person. Why does management think engineers don't want to talk to customers? Customers are fucking fun to talk to, man. You learn a lot by just talking to customers that the managers are never going to pick up on. And the sales guys who are selling the customer are never going to pick up on. Engineers need to get, take tech support calls. Oh, I did tech support for two years before I became and went to software engineering. I was a programmer for a long time. But I, I couldn't, I didn't have a degree, so whatever. That was all I could get. I did it. I went to a software company. I went two years tech support. I got learned all their software products. Talked to people every day. That was amazing. That amazing. I mean, it sucked that like it was in there for it was like over, I was a year too much in there. I just quit after a year and got some kind of software uh, internship, development internship. Anyway, I eventually did. But talking to customers is great, especially if you're talking about somebody else's software that's, that you actually know who wrote it. <laughs> He's in the building. And you could go talk to him and ask him questions about it. Like, 
he's like feels bad when he's like, like you actually found something wrong or a customer found something wrong he gets super motivated and that's not even that's just like one person to one right if you actually talk to them on the phone oh yeah man you don't you only need ten thousand customers you don't need a billion customers what's wrong with you you only need ten thousand is this not news okay we are told what to build, where we are the builders. And then contract negotiation, still alive and well. Every team I've ever been on pretty much has had a definition of ready, which is essentially a checklist of things that have to happen before we can start the work. That's a contract. How is that not a contract? We need all the mocks created. We need all the acceptance criteria. We need an estimate. We need all the dependencies identified. We need the designs, the workflows. You are basically saying, okay, this is exactly what you're going to go build. Are we good now? Now go. Right. And the engineers should be a part of building all that stuff. They should be involved with designing all that stuff. Now, not all the way out, like people are talking about the biz design up front, but some, an SDF, SDUF, some design up front. I mean, like, what are we trying to build? Who are we building it for? What are the, some of the constraints around this thing? Now, now this big design up front, that's a bad idea. So you have, but you have to get the engineers involved, right? But the engineers do code only. They only do the code. No, they should be doing the architecture. They should do the mock-ups, the page, and talk to the customers in the room with them. No, the customer, I talk to the customer. The, I give the requirements to the engineers and they do the code. It's like, no, <laughs> that's the old way. Man, that's a manufacturing process. That works in manufacturing, right? When you have to coordinate a bunch of people who are already knowing what they're doing. It's going to be the same. They're already at the widget. They, you know, they need to get the new thing that stamps it out for you. But we don't need to do that. All that manufacturing process is in our build pipeline. Now it's just, well, what widget are we building? What was it supposed to look like? And that's all taste design, who your audience is, like all that stuff. How much time do I got here? I'm gonna keep going. Go build this exact thing. And then the last one, responding to change over following a plan. I think we've gotten better as an industry. Modern Agile, Agile has sliced these plans smaller, but it's still very common for sprints basically to just be a large project plan sliced up into two week chunks. Yeah, it's just waterfall, man. That's the same as, that's the exact same as a waterfall. Sprints, what is all waterfall stuff, man? That's not Agile at all. What are you talking about? No. Yeah, what Agile is like, how much budget do we have for doing changes? Are we, are we changing? Are we talking to customers at the end of the sprint and making changes and additions and change, like moving around stuff? Are they looking at it saying, no, that's not the right thing? Or it's like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Like, how do you build a product that way? So you can show kind of what the customer, what the thing's doing before you build it or as you're building it to make sure he's on the same page. Never heard of it. I and mean, even a sprint itself is basically has become a thick scope plan. We will deliver these four features, not we will achieve this goal. And product roadmaps, roadmaps are basically, you know, they look suspiciously like a, project plan from the, with a Gantt chart because that's all they are essentially. I mean, what, List of features. That's, they have to. Look, man, you're not going to be able to sell the managers who are buying these buying these trainings the, without them doing this stuff, okay? The Agile people failed. Sorry. They didn't have a sales cycle in mind. They didn't know how to sell this thing. It's not even really possible to sell it. It's more of a culture thing. And it's who the what, what kind of people you want in your thing. What kind of technical skill do they bring? Where do they come from? What's their personality like? Do they like working in this stuff? Or do you guys get along together? Are you guys on their back? What's your burn down chart? You were supposed to deliver 16 points in the sprint of two stages. Look, 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 look at this. We have the definition of done right here. And we got your requirements. Like, is it like that? Well, goddamn, what do you expect? spread out over time versus a like a north star Jesus set of Christ, man. Sign posts for where we want to where we want to be you can have scope in there as well but they've essentially become a large portfolio plan so even outside of the manifesto modern agile kind of grew legs and turned into something even more perverse or the quote no it just went back to being waterfall because that's what the people are comfortable with it's pay the bills okay that's what's going on agilists was basically a silver bullet right it was how agile people went in and tried to enact change because well it's in the manifesto when the manifesto was never intended to be a strict set of guidelines it was more of a set of values a way of thinking but you know, people yeah, it's like four sentences. It's nothing. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's not in the guide. It's not in the agile guide. There's things. There's not much in that thing, by the way. And that's what got people all fucked up because the managers, the engineers came back and said, "Here is the solution. It's agile." It's like four sentences, and then and the managers like, "What do you mean? What's this fucking shit?" And like, and then we like talk to their buddies like, "What is this? What is this stuff?" Well, those companies over there are doing it, and they're doing it like this. They're doing it like that. And they're using Scrum. And there's nothing like that stuff. So. And they expect like to go into these teams and like do these these agile makeovers on these teams, but the people in management all they want the same thing. They just want the waterfall still. And instead of being super awesome, it's like, look, man, here's the deal. <laughs> this is knowledge work. We have no long. We have no idea how long it's gonna take. We have no idea. All we can do is do a little piece at a time where we're getting closer. 
Are we getting closer? Are we getting closer? Is this kind of where you're coming from? Is this kind of what you're thinking about? And it's not going to be in two week instruments. It might be a month. It might be a day. It might be six days. It might be four days. But without the customer in the room we'll saying, yeah, it was what we you coming up with next? This is the next thing. This next thing is without that feedback loop. Yeah. You're just guessing. Come on. Now, there are certain projects, yes, you can do them waterfall, but they're going to take a long time and they're definitely going to be over budget and over time. Whatever you estimate it to be is going to be longer than that. Okay, that's like you can guarantee that. There's never been an on time waterfall. Okay, never one, ever, 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 ever. So, all this whole, this whole manufacturing process, thinking that you could get this thing down, yes, we don't, that's the, that is the risk. See, that's the thing with adventure driven development. The risk is up front. How King, how long do you want to go for, man? We don't know how we don't know how long it's gonna take. But we, we're gonna do our best because we want the gold too. Okay, we got some skin in the game, right? And it's also our lives that we're spending, you know. We acquired these skill sets. Magician, mage, you know, or, uh, what is it called? Uh, the, the the night's been lifting weights, getting on the getting ready, eating meat, uh, eating uh <laughs> like eating really well. Try to be as healthy as possible to go attack this goddamn dragon. And that costs money. So, like, we have a skin in this, man. We could die or lose it or whatever. Fish out, whatever. There's a pretty big risk for us. But the risk on your side is, like, how long do you have? How long do you want to go and do this? Like, we'll be real up front. Like, you want to do six months? You want to do a year? And we'll keep going. We'll just go in this increment of a week, two weeks, three weeks. And we'll talk the whole time. And we'll see if we're getting close to it. And it's... After six months, you're like, fuck, I don't think you guys are there. It's like, okay, well, I guess we're not there. We're not even close. We're not even getting, you're not even in the ballpark. And that'd be more honest. As opposed to like three years later, where is the product? It's impossible to put together. The requirements weren't correct. We'd go in and kind of just smack people around with a manifesto. You know, it was never intended to be a religion or a dogma. The other thing that happened is it kind of became a, it was associated with this like impossible promise of twice the work in half the time. And that was Jeff Sutherland's, I'll say infamous book. It's not a bad book. I don't know where that came from, twice the work in half the time. That's that's goofy, but if you kind of think about like if how it was done before with the waterfall, because it's always comparing it's, it's all the suits compared to waterfall, right? It kind of did seem like it was twice as fast and half the time, twice as much half the time, because you're getting this feedback loop that you, know, you do these waterfall projects be eighteen months, thirty six months, forty eight months, seven years, you wouldn't see anything the whole time, and then freak talk about freak out. Nothing's working the whole time until it's supposed to be right at the end and it still doesn't work. Oh, oh, no wonder people got pissed off. They're like, you got to do something different. And this is where the agile stuff came up out of. And, but the management still were like, no, you have to make it a manufacturing process. Like, no, dude, we can't do it that way. We have to do it this other way. Just, I don't think the message got through. Like, it's knowledge work. This is not manufacturing. And it's like scrum, lean. It's like, no, 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 none of that. It is knowledge work. We have no idea if we're going to get there. We can try. And if we look at the history of this stuff, there's all kinds of companies that tried and they were okay for a while. And then they stopped. And because they, were, they went through the process. There wasn't just they went up and they were the ones that won. There's all kinds of them coming up, man. And they were the ones that kind of like beat out the other ones because they had somebody or the team was set up to be working in this way. We're getting feedback, making changes. We just had the right mix of people and the right mix of technology and the right picks of things. And, and there's not a huge network of people. So there's not this communication overload bullshit. And they're like kind of into it. They're kind of into the adventure. They were doing it just for the money. They wanted to go fucking slay a dragon and fucking climb a mountain too, man. That's part of it. And some people are like, oh, climb a mountain. Or can't you like just get a jet to go up there and <laughs> drop you off at the top. <laughs> Some people want to climb. Fuck, but that title, man, that just killed us. Agile became a way to just get more done faster. Another thing I've seen, Agile as sort of an excuse for uh, self-imposed chaos. Like, yeah, I know you had to um, scrap what you worked on three times this sprint and you had to work overtime and you had to fix these two defects and oh, by the way, you were also like trying to do planning for next quarter. Okay, that's too much. That's unsustainable. That you can do for a very brief moment. Those are called heroic efforts. But if that's the standard of your team and that's how you've done it and there's all this promises and not making them do any things and extra work and overtime and all that stuff, that's manufacturing stuff. And honestly, no, those people just don't put up with it very well. Now, people will put up with amazing levels of abuse, but really talented people won't, 
right? That's the, and that's the thing, right? So the ones left over, still trying to do it in this way, these heroic efforts, yeah, they get burnt out and maybe eventually just leave the industry because they think that's what it's like, as opposed to like putting their foot down, it's like, hey, this is not manufacturing, man. You want the good stuff? You want to get the dragon's gold? We got to have some good people and we got to pay them well. And we got to take things seriously. We got to talk to the customer. We got to, we got to feel the mountain. We got to look at the, where this, where this dragon may, we got to send out scouts and see where the, the mouth of this cave is, where the dragon's at. That takes risk and skill and effort, man. You got you to you see that that's real. Like you got to be a quest master. You have to understand that this quest is something that people don't usually go on because it's dangerous and it's risky for everybody. There's no guarantees, man. We're not building the bridge. You know, and you know, the kitchen needed cleaning, so we, we need you to do that too. But that's okay, we're agile. I mean, how many times I've heard that as an excuse for just having shitty or no actual good good management, good processes. Also, it, oh, it, and it, what is the what is the something. what was the process that you were you were giving as an alternative? Oh, you didn't have one? Well, what else are they supposed to do, man? What else are they supposed to do? They can't blame themselves. They already getting blamed already. They can't blame management. You want to get fired, motherfucker? You can't blame those motherfuckers. So what are you going to blame? Agile. It's Agile. So let's blame Agile. Now Agile gets a bad name. For this shitty process, it wasn't even Agile to begin with. Thing that is sold and certifications and the coaching and the frameworks. If you look at Scout Agile Framework, my God, all of the money that's been made there. Training <laughs> this framework, Agile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Money's been made on confusion and people not admitting and wanting hearing the truth. The truth is, you've heard me say it like 16 times this is already in this video. The truth is, it's not manufacturing. It's fucking knowledge work, man. Became a product. And then the last thing I, I noted here was, I referred to it as ceremonial garb, where there's a perception that they see, they feel like we're, quote, agile because they see the team. Right, right. It's called, uh, what is it? Where they are deflecting responsibility off the fact that they don't know shit. Ain't gonna know shit. Can't know shit. Ain't gonna be possible to know shit. They want to put it onto something else that's outside of their control. And put it on that. They fuck up, not me. I... Come on, man. They can't lose their job. They got kids in fucking private school and braces. And they got a BMW payment, dude. There's not gonna be their fault. Come on now huddled around a table or they go into jira and they can see you know they can see like the plans and they can see the cute little board with the stories moving across and maybe part of it referred to as like agile in name only or agile theater it's kind of all the same type of thing where you're you're going through the motions so that you can have the appearance of having changed or made some sort of improvement but really all you, you haven't really changed you just put well how what are you asking the someone that's a c student to do a level work okay now they got a level cash right because a zero interest rate environment is super easy to get money it was super easy. I, I, it was very easy for these people to get money, okay? They didn't really have to do a lot of sales work, okay? And what did they do with it? They hired you. Not their problem. They don't know how this shit works, man. They get the fucking money. You do the work. Oh, we got Agile. They got a board. Oh, neat. Look at that. I don't really have to think too much about it. And we can just blame Agile if you fuck up. But get rid of you. This place is crazy. These people are crazy. This industry is crazy. The fact that this is the norm. So I, I, I sold my company in 2003. I took a bunch of time off. I did no tech. I was doing yoga and like meditating and like other stuff that was totally not. I was, I was Luddite. I had been in tech for about 20 years at that point. I was like so burnt out. Went through a divorce. I didn't want to do any tech for a while. My body was shot from sitting it down all the time. Eating crap diets. I could have fixed all that shit up. And I came back to tech and I couldn't believe that this shit was going on. I figured this, I heard a little bit of this agile stuff about the time. I was like, oh, it's going to be, it's like, it sounds like stuff we're already doing. So that makes sense, right? It's like, and then it turned into this waterfall stuff. And I came back and I was working at these companies and they were calling themselves agile. and They're doing this waterfall stuff. I'm like, this is just waterfall, you guys. This is like the worst way to do stuff in the least fun way. You know, there's another way to do it. And I didn't know how a way to explain because I didn't understand what this whole agile was. Until I worked at these companies and then I was like, oh, this is all just a fucking scam, man. They're trying to do stuff like I was doing without having any understanding of what that actually entails and how risky it is 
and how you have to completely let go of control and you're not guaranteed at the end you could you're probably gonna fail at the end you're not gonna make what you thought you were gonna make at the beginning it's not gonna look the way it does it's not gonna take as long as you think it does you'll get there sooner but not faster and you don't know how long it's gonna take you don't have a little burn down chart yeah that's scary as hell no wonder people are like, oh, those like managers like, we don't know how long it's going to take. And there's no guarantee at the end. Are you insane? Are you actually saying this out loud? Put new words to your same old processes. That was cheery. Sorry about that. If it was too, too dark or depressing, but I just wanted to align on where I think. Quote, nah, dude. <laughs> and, and to me, I don't overstate it or be overdramatic. I'm dark and depressing. <laughs> to me it was something i was excited about it wasn't just a job title or whatever <coughs> to me it was finally saying here companies say we're willing to invest in a more human-centric approach to software development we're willing to accept that software development is different than construction human-centric dude how about profit-centric how about make customers come back and buy a product over and over again centric i don't give a fuck about human-centric what are you talking about now the team yeah yeah the managers should be doing that but they haven't been you want to know why? They don't give a fuck. That's why. They hired you to do that shit. They don't have to worry about that stuff. They hired an agile trainer. You're supposed to listen to that guy because he's the guy that says how to do the thing, right? And if you don't do it, if you can't do it and you don't get success, it's because you didn't do agile right. What's wrong with you? <laughs> These people are crazy. It's different than these other types of projects that our project management professionals are trained to run. And we're open to changing how we how we do that, how we structure it. That's why I think it was kind of just kind of a letdown the current state that we're in. Yeah, the way you structure is get the hell out of the way. You get management off the engineers' backs and trust them and hire good people, pay them well. Don't get a basic junior grade React uh, boot camp <laughs> graduates to do this stuff. That ain't gonna work. Come on now. Now you gotta have, now you gotta have a couple of those, right? Well, it depends on your team, right? In the beginning, you probably don't want to put things. Else. You want people that are hardcore and understand how to get things done, and they understand some of this mindset. Have been totally in the mind control of the agile scrum and of and the Jira. Get, get, we're gonna put the sprint uh, poker planning. Like, dude, if they're in that mind control cult. It's like, it's like, hey, we're not doing that. We're not doing Agile. We're not doing Waterfall. We're doing this whole other thing. It's called adventure-driven development. And we don't know how long it's going to take. How long do you want to go for? We'll get you there sooner. But we don't know how long it's going to take. Are, you, well, is that a good, is, are, we, is that, are we up to the to par with the risk that's involved? That's, that's scary. It's scary for these guys. And But the thing is, that's the reality. The reality is we don't know. No one knows. There are so many projects that have died, so many companies that have died, thinking that they could get away with it without knowing that they only got a little bit of time, a little bit of runway, or some specific amount of runway. And you know, there's ways to get there without building, you know, designing everything up front, and then building, you know, building out in three weeks and then delivering it, and you know, in one, in one week. No, no. That's not how it works. That's not how we do it. <laughs> That's not how we do it anymore. That doesn't work. It never did work. It's so bad to build stuff like that. It's so draining and cold and inhuman. And, and I look back at my time in, in coaching and as a manager who was trying to implement agile practices, and I think there were a couple of failures I think we can learn from. And when we start looking at the next steps we can take, I think we need to learn from these things. I think one big thing is agile coaching failed, I think, generally speaking. Yeah, good coaches thank you. But even the good coaches, I think, failed to. Why? Well, they're not. Okay, look, man. Who are the people that go into agile coaching? Who are those people? Is it engineers? Is it engineers that get really deep into the code bases, understand language constructs and architecture patterns? Was it was those guys. Oh, it's not those guys. Who is it then? Oh, it's product managers and sales guys who took a training and realized they could become a coach for $10,000 a week. And they're telling you how to build stuff. These are C students who know how to sell, man. I'm sorry you got took. I am sorry the whole industry got taken on this shit, man. You didn't ask the right questions, man. This debate course is awesome. Like, like it totally clears your mind with all this stuff and reminds you, like, if you don't, if you've not done debate before, like I'm going to do a review on that next. Uh, dude, <laughs> you got to ask some more questions and you just got to be more bold. It's okay. If you haven't noticed, 
people do burn out pretty quickly and you leave the industry. Sometimes within like three, three was the average like five years, seven years like that. That's ridiculous for the level of effort that's involved. It's ridiculous. And it's because this stuff people don't understand. No, the people talk so cocky, like, yeah, we know how to do agile. This is the way you do it. This is the way you can sprint the Jira and the burn down chart. It's, all, it's like, that's how all stuff's crap. All the software that you use and actually that came up out of this stuff was not built using that shit. All right? We weren't doing any of that stuff. <laughs> that's all for management, man. To make them feel better. Let's give them a little, little, little pacifier. A little pacifier so they can. I feel better. Look at my burned out chart. Look at all my requirements. This, this proc's perfect. There'll be no problems. <laughs> Connect the dots between what we want and what the business wants. And what we want and care about, which is what I just mentioned, I was excited about, human-centric approach, new ways of approaching complex software development. They don't care. They being the company, right? The man. They want it fast. Why would they care? That's not their problem. That's your problem. That's what they hired you for. They went out and got the, the sales to make it possible for you to go dink around with this bullshit. Whatever you need to do to get it done. Now, if you guys could stand up for yourselves for three seconds and say, look, man, we're not doing any of that shit. We're going to figure this stuff out together. And we're going to have the customer in the room with us. <laughs> we're gonna, I'm going to have a hotline to his fucking call to some customer that you've identified that's going to work with us. Who will be buying our stuff. Who's going to be the person actually buying stuff. You may pay them, whatever, but like you, you the, the, this is the person that you've identified your your people, right? That you're that are your key customers, right? And you talk to them. I know. <laughs> Eight years talking to customers. Are you crazy? Faster, better, cheaper. That is what the company wants. If they could outsource all of us to the AIs, they they would do that. It's a company. Oh yeah. You don't think they do it? Hello. You don't think they've been that way the whole time, man? Look. They're not gonna, they want to do that. If they could, they would get radio. They hate you. They hate you. They, they, all they want is money, right? These are CC students. All they want to do is send their kids to private school, to pay for the BMWs and go on vacation three times a year and ski chalet and all that stuff, right? They don't give a fuck about this technology delivering value business. They don't give a fuck. I'm glad he's saying these things. It's just sort of like, he's sort of like, well, I guess it might be like, like it's kind of like this. Like, no, dude. All this shit was bad. Agile manifesto, good. Four sentences, good. For people like me and him, maybe? At the beginning of this thing, before he got brainwashed by the cult of, the cargo cult of Agile. Oh, I'm going to throw all your, I'm going to throw all your software development problems. If, they, if that actually worked, it would have been working in a year. Not 20 years. It's a profit machine. We need to connect the dots between changes that we're willing to make and what they care about. And I don't think coaches had that skill set. When I went in as a coach, I thought it was enough to Why be skilled that? in, quote, agile, the structures and the learnings in that body. No, bondage. no, dude. That's the grift, man. Agile's the container for your grift. I'm sorry you didn't pass the class, A student. You didn't see the subtext of the C student saw. All I need is a really good patter. A really good, and then the confidence compass to tell the managers of these companies we will solve your problem don't worry don't you worry we are the best coaches oh my god this guy's so good he was over at xyz microsystems and oh my god he he got their team in high gear you're not gonna be you're not you're gonna be super happy with this coach okay do you get it i'm sorry if this is like a shocker it's like hey man it's this the, the we're blood sport out here. <laughs> this is blood sports. Sales are, they're sharks, man. And when there's lots of money to be made, there's a lot of grifting going on. A lot of bullshit. A lot, and lots of, because the managers have no idea how this stuff works. It's easy to bullshit them. Holy fuck, man. In the zero interest rate environment, it was getting money, so people getting money so easy. It was super easy to bullshit these guys. Super easy. Now they're Malam, or they're trying to hold on. They're getting rid of all the engineers, <laughs> but their business is going to be is totally open for destruction. Thank you for showing us the way. All the companies that currently exist. Thank you for showing us a market. But now we're going to have a bunch of competitors to just destroy them, just fragment those markets amazingly, like going to deeper, deeper niches and actually serving customers directly. Uh, as opposed to having multiple layers of these managers who are in between. Come on, man. Knowledge. Oh, it was enough. It, it was not enough. We we failed at being influencers at the right levels. That's one big thing. The other big thing is... I don't they weren't interested. 
They were interested in your influence, by the way. They didn't want to hear that because you know what? All the other people, they were getting, they were in the cult and they were bought on. Okay, man. So <clears throat> don't beat yourself up too much. They were interested. We had to say this agile stuff's for engineers, man. It's for people that are climbing the mar mountain that are actually got their skin in the game who are cutting, cutting blades on dragon's teeth. Okay. It's for the agile's for those guys, not for the management. Okay. All this TM trademark certification scrum coach bullshit training no that's not for that's not for engineers that's for management <laughs> i don't know that it's something any of us could control really but it's this idea of agile's product that it's something that can be sold and installed that you can take a two-day course and be trained as a as being able to lead a team that product is exactly that's the problem this is sold as an easy quick solution silver and then here's the thing in an environment where academia has failed Academia really could have told the computer science kids back in the 70s and 80s how to actually build this stuff because they had plenty of examples. They had Xerox. They had all these companies who were coming up, these microcomputer companies. They didn't want to do it that way because you want to know why? Management didn't like that. Management was taken out of the loop. And that's not going to fly with management. So management also saw that as some of these companies are like, oh, this is strategic operations. This is trade secret. This is stuff we don't want other companies to know about. So how about just shut up and build the stuff for us? And some companies like understood this and some companies did not. And the, a lot of this, uh, I think a lot of this uh, agile TM trademark copyright stuff was some of these psyops from these, some of these other companies going, Let's go fuck these companies up by teaching them the shit that don't work. That's basically waterfall in disguise. Give them Jira. <laughs> Give them the spare down chart. Give them the planning poker and say, hey, hey, that's how you do it. <laughs> It'll fuck them up for years and they'll be able, never be able to catch up. <laughs> I think really hurt the movement and who knows maybe it'll be different this next decade because there won't be as much free money floating around so in a previous video I got some really awesome critical but constructive feedback that in the lot in my videos a lot of my advice amounts to basically get good or suck it up or stop being a wuss um, and just accept it the way it is so in this this video in particular is me no I don't accept it what it is but you gotta you gotta suck it up a little bit you got you gotta be good you have to know the technical details of what you're working on and it's fucking takes a long time there's no way around it and your AI is not gonna be able to do it for you you have to know how it works and it takes a long time. It takes going through these experiences and like understanding how things shouldn't be built and how it shouldn't be done. That's a big part of this stuff. It's like well, the, the way, the actual way that actually gets the, the success and on a long-term sustainable basis and gets the people want to come work for your company and talented people to come on, but like begging to come on and you can say no. And you know, you only want a team of 17, seven people anyway, seven or 17, you know, max. <laughs> it feels like it's out of that. To start of the company, man. <laughs> You're just going to screw it up. You're not going to be able to maintain that structure uh, with more people. It's just how that works. Uh, yeah. Uh. A little tough to provide actual guidance. I do think accepting the way things are and not just sitting and just doing it in frustration all the time, I think is the most healthy approach for us as individuals. I still stand by that kind of advice in general. Accept the way things are now. Oof, no. Well, okay, here's the thing. If you're if you're starting out and you need to go d d understand some of how this stuff is done and work in these businesses just to see how how bad they are structured, and to understand this, I'm just, this stuff is rampant and people are very cocky and very, very, very confident in what they know because because a sales guy told them right because the sales guy is super confident even more confident so he's got to build up that confidence right because he doesn't know man you're actually calling him out when you do that stuff so yeah they're gonna freak out so it's like uh you don't have to put up with it but you may have to for a little while to like understand what this stuff is so when you're in an environment like we, the way i'm speaking about doing things you're like oh god that would be amazing you would understand it's like oh that makes sense yeah of course that's how you do it i'm like why would you do it that agile, old agile way? Well, why, why would you do it in a waterfall way? It's like, oh, but you have to go understand that's how people think it's done. So when I'm speaking this way, it's like, the only people that are really going to really kind of get it or like have worked in those environments on those teams, on those projects and go like, oh, that, that was fucked. And it's, there is a, there, oh, there's a different way that's true to the like original intent of agile. Okay, but so, so, so I've been working on these ideas for a while. Like, I came up with this adventure-driven development stuff, which I will share 
about uh, my, my rough draft. I'll share, I'll share my rough draft for it. And, and work on it, maybe get some hints from, from, from people where it brings the focus back on to the people on the team and m- can, makes it so maybe the people, the manager of, of this team will let us, let people run it, run it that way and run interference. They can, he can use the Jira tools or, you know, we'll do an automated thing where it makes the Jira look perfect how it's supposed to. Or maybe just not work at companies that require those toolings and try and find a company or a way that will let you develop software in this organic way that that um, really is focused on, on the customer's problem and delivering value there as opposed to some weird process that's added on, which adds friction and complexity, bad feelings, um, mistrust, uh, and the, the very inverse of what it takes to create really great software when, when knowledge work you can't do it in that you can't do knowledge work in a gulag man you're not going to get the best stuff if someone's working at a fucking gulag all right if you are like me and you do have a lot of frustration or disappointment in kind of how the industry is going i think we can turn that into positive energy i mean what do we do about this you know we've tried kind of taking back the word agile by creating new words for what modern agile actually has become like wagile or fragile or scrum or fall i was just oh it's easy to describe the problem but it's not easy to figure out what is it actually that could be done better. <laughs> like it's like describing the problem is easy. It's like yeah, because it's fucking stupid ad. It's just waterfall. It's just pit. It's just oh, we take waterfall and we put lipstick on it. Look, agile TM trademark license tra- uh, retreat uh, workbook. Like coach scrum. Thinking this morning and I made up badgel or sagil. We could you know like. We tried that. That didn't work. We have to accept that we lost. What? How would you? That's just a joke, man. You thought that was actually going to change the industry. Like, if we call it some bad word, that's going to change the industry. It's like, no, dude, that's not how it works. And by the way, you're never going to change the industry because this waterfall stuff is not going away until academia changes their tomb and says, hey, look, man, everything that this, this society makes is pretty much like a product, a manufacturing product, except for the design part of it. And software is more the design part of it than the manufacturing part of it. And they haven't got that message through yet. And that's, so that's why these scrum teams like, are still like, no, you can do it in the manufacturing process. So it's just a widget. It's just software, right? It's just buttons. <laughs> no, it's taste. It's, it's skill. It's design. It's insight. It's uh, um, social, social awareness. It's uh anthropology it's science it's like true science like you have a you think of things that are going to be like this when like use an experiment and the, the universe will tell you the dragon and the mountain will tell you the mountain will tell you when when it's been defeated because you're in the cave right and the dragon will the, the dragon will tell you when it's been defeated when it's when it's on the on the floor not breathing anymore how long is it going to take how many whacks of the stick i don't know between 12 and 36 wax. No, I must know now to put the jerk. You must tell us ahead of time how many wax it's going to take to make that dragon die. You got to tell us it's going to be 13 wax or 14 wax. We got money riding on this thing. It's like, I don't know, man. It might be, take 20, but you said 12. It's like, it could take 12. I could get lucky and find a weak spot. What, dude? No, no, no. That You, just, you agreed to 14 wax. And the burn down chart says that we should have this dragon dead in two days. <laughs> These people. The brand that was stolen or confiscated or purchased or whatever. How I'm approaching this is I'm kind of, oh. been, I have been for years, kind of cutting bait from Agile. I've been separating myself from that word and all of the modern trappings of what's in that word. So Good. I try to talk in much more specifics now. I don't just say we want to be more Agile. I talk about, we try to, we want to release twice a week now instead of only once a sprint. Very, very specifics. Good rather than some vague umbrella term. But that leaves, like, what do we call But releasing is not the same thing as getting your feedback, right? So are you getting release and feedback twice a week? You're, you're, you're somebody looking at it over your shoulder? Like, here it is, look at it. Because releasing isn't really, unless you're getting feedback, it's not really agile. That's a major thing. That's why it takes, we don't know how long it's going to take because we have to get feedback. We're going to try this thing. 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 Just try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Oh, we got one. Look at that. That was the one. But if we didn't do the trying, how are we supposed to know, man? 
Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes people have an insight. But a lot of these things, people like, I was so smart, I came up with it. Tell my, they did like 55 tries, you didn't see. And there's a thousand other guys out there all trying all kinds of stuff that you don't see. You only see the one that comes up. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg, he invented the social media. It's like, dude, that's me. We had bulletin boards way back in the day. They were electronic. It was one of the first things we did. We hooked the computers up with modems. People like built bulletin boards and what they could do. And before that, we had in front of the Safeway, in front of the grocery store, you put up your little thing. Uh, that was like there for many, for, for, I don't know, maybe centuries. Who knows how long they've had the bulletin boards. Like, you write your little note, you put it up there. I know I had it ever since I was a little kid. They had them all over the place. Yeah, that was one of the reasons you would go to the stores to go look at the bulletin board and see if your friends left notes for you for whatever reason. When's the picnic going to happen? Who's coming? Who's getting married? Who got the two died? Like, some of that stuff wouldn't go in the paper. It would go up on the bulletin board. Mark Zuckerberg, he invented that. He call this thing that used to be agile what i think agile provided was a kind of moral compass almost again i don't want to overstate it but it's almost like a kind of like an ethical code almost and i really do think that our industry is desperately lacking ethical standards in that way so oh um, well, the industry is lacking. <laughs> 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 holy shit this guy this guy is like he's just an a student right he's just a good good-hearted man right good-hearted man Lacking ethical standards in a zero interest rate environment where deals are made at the at the strip club doing lines of blow off the stripper's ass. And when you're you're saying the industry may have some ethical ethical issues. <laughs> yeah, I think they might have some. That's why it's like time to take some of this stuff back. Okay? There engineers used to be in charge of a lot of this stuff, and we still can too, but we gotta have some nuts, right? We gotta have some nuts. We might have to go do a little bit of sales work ourselves. We might have to go see some, find some customers on our own. We might have to go find some markets on our own. We might have to get some more, get there with some other people, like one other person who sees our way, who sees this way. Maybe we don't have to quit our jobs, but maybe we could do this on the side somehow, or maybe we could quit our jobs and could do this, look into it full time. Know what the answer is, but there does need to be something I think that replaces agile and kind of takes its place as what we, the team members, how we want to define how we work in this industry. And I adventure driven development that's what I'm suggesting. I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a video on it. I've already got my document written up, so I think we need to get more specific than just a manifesto than just a set of values. So, an ethical yeah, that was silly to do that. That was actually retarded. I, I, the agile people are a little bit uh suspect because of what they did after that and how they treated it. And made it into a business and an industry. They totally just destroyed the spirit of the thing, and uh, it's really sad. Uh, but boomers are gonna boom, you know. <laughs> That's what they do. They gotta cash in, man. And he's saying, "What happened to the ethics?" It's like, well, it started off great, man. The hippie movement started off great and didn't turn out so great. Didn't turn out so great with all the bombings and stuff. And if you don't know, what I'm talking about in the '70s. That was a thing that didn't didn't some of those. People are just not very loving. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, so yeah. So these things can turn into something from something good to something bad. And what I'm saying is, let go of it and start an adventure. Start adventure development. You know, adventure driven development. I'm gonna do a video about it. And I, you know, I give this guy a hard time, been a hard time. But I think he gets it. But he's also a little shy. It's like I'm not shy. I'm not shy about this stuff. I'm gonna say it how it is. It's just how I am. But like. He's a little bit naive about some of the things that have been going on in the industry and how people have seen it. And maybe he missed some stuff because he's definitely a nice student. And uh, see, I have definitely hung around with my fair share of C students. And yeah, they're a different breed, man. They have a different different outlook on life. They have other things they're concerned about. And uh, delivering customer value is not necessarily top of the list. And technical excellence is not top of the list. And human values in our work is Definitely not on the top of the list. Let's see what he has to say. Code, even a standard set of practices that can evolve because the, the meaning and the values and the people who still believe in what Agile meant, we're all still here. We just kind of went underground. And I think a lot of us are waiting for something else to kind of gain traction. So again, I have no idea how to solve this problem, but I think it is I a do. problem worth trying to solve. I do. First of all, it's like going and ranting about some of this stuff. And also understanding that most of the stuff that I'm going to bring up in this adventure driven development is not for management. It is not for management. It is it is for us, and and that and that means that we may have to do some of the things that management did. Maybe we have to go to the strip club, and get some sales done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs>